Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Well, I guess if you tuned in last time, you know that I've been to Gulf Shores and back since the last video. So today we're gonna try to cut a little wheat. Um, while I was gone in Gulf Shores, we had, well it was over five inches of rain because my rain gauge goes to five inches and it overflowed when we was gone. So I don't know exactly how much we had, but it was over five inches. So, there's been virtually zero wheat cut in this area because it's just been, been too wet. I mean, uh, now, you know, we got muddy ground conditions with after having that much rain, so it's just, it's gonna be kind of a nightmare here. So, we've been wanting to cut every day this week and it just keeps coming little pop-up showers. You know, you get a tenth or two and it's just making a mess of things. And we actually come, we come really close to getting the rain here just a little bit ago, so overall, weather conditions ain't perfect for cutting wheat right now but we're gonna give it a whirl now all this wheat that I'm cutting this is custom work we got 14 acres of our own but we'll probably cut it after we get the custom work done and it's all going in a bin so it's I'm gonna guess it's testing around 19 so we're fine with that going in a bin and I've always said too it's a little bit different when it's got down to 13 dry and then got rained on and brought it back up to 19 versus just not being mature yet and testing 19. So uh, there shouldn't be no issues at 19 putting it in a bin. I mean, you know, you don't want to go dumping 15,000 bushel in a bin, which we're not going to do that anyway. But uh, overall, that shouldn't be too bad. So we're going to go over here, put the head on, maybe try to cut a little. Um, one of the main concerns is, is today is Thursday and you never, ever, ever start on a Friday bad luck so we're gonna cut something today regardless I don't care if it's 25% we only cut a half a hop we're gonna do something in case things will go tomorrow then that way you started on Thursday so nonetheless I'll shut up and we'll get over here and get started I think we finally got things dialed in here uh, it's taking a little longer than normal but you know how it is when you're unfamiliar with the machine so I was quite a ways off on the moisture I was showing it it's 16, about right at 16% moisture. And took a sample of town and they're showing it closer to 20, which is fine. Like I say, we're going in a bin. It's no big deal. So that'll drastically change the yield, you know, when you when your moisture is that far off. So uh, I was showing it right at 100 bushel an acre average. So it's gonna be a little less than that. So I think it'll be about 90 bushel a week, but we'll see where it lands. Sounds like according to the forecast, the wind's gonna blow all night tonight so that'll help you know we won't have a bunch of dew tomorrow but uh we got a gutter calibrated earlier and moisture should be really close yield i mean it's going to be in a ballpark you know you need to calibrate it multiple times but we didn't have time to do that we're going to calibrate it a few more times tomorrow so that's your instant yield instant moisture average yield average moisture but the plan is we'll come in and plant double crop beans in uh, as soon as we get the wheat off um, it's actually probably too wet to be planting out here right now um, there's a little bit of water standing over there everything's carrying okay I mean you know if you look out you know, down the tires. I mean, they're not muddy or nothing. So it's not like we're just paddling mud from one end to the other. But uh, as far as if you was going to go planting in this, you're probably not going to get your slot closed very good. So I think the plan will be get the wheat off and then come back with the planter versus trying to do them both at once. I get asked a lot on TikTok on a deal like this, you know, hey, you guys going to bail the straw or whatever? And no, we're not. I mean, we have no use for it. Uh, the guy that we're cutting for here, he has none. Not saying somebody out there don't have a use for it. But you know, then there's one more step in the process that you gotta wait on before you can get your beans planted. And of course, you know, there's a lot of compaction involved with baling. Time you come in with them big ass heavy balers and bale it and then pick the bales up and whatnot. So, you know, there's some issues there. And then, you know, if you run the numbers just right, I mean, even though you're selling a straw, I mean, the replacement cost on that, putting fertilizer back on it from what you took off, you know, that gets pretty pricey, so. Uh, me personally, I'm not going out and just begging people to bail the straw off of anything that we farm. I mean, it, you know, you got to replace that, and fertilizer's high, so the replacement cost gets in your pocket in a hurry. So that's just my thinking. But I know there's people out there that have to bail and raise livestock, and there's there's no way around it. I'm not not knocking that, but 
I'm just saying I'm not in the market to be going out telling everybody, yeah, just go bail our stuff. So we ended up cutting about 47 acres yesterday. Uh, we're gonna end up shifting gears a little bit here today. The bin that we're putting this in, uh, it didn't quite dry as quick as we thought it would overnight in the bin with heat on it. So rather than put too much in the bin and cause a whole mess of problems and potentially, you know, getting some spoilage or having to pull it right back out because you got too much in the bin, all that good stuff, we're gonna switch farms. So I'm gonna take the head off. We're just gonna go about a mile down the road and the wheat on that farm is going in a bin over at that farm. So that'll give this one time to dry all day. And then by this evening, we can probably put some more back in it, but it's just not worth it. Um, we've got another place we can go, another bin we can go into. So it's just as easy to do it that way and not have to worry about it. So we'll get the head off and head over that way. There's like 108 or 110 acres in this field. So we've got, you know, whatever it is, between 60 and 70 left now, roughly. So. We should be able to get that mode off, you know, in one day. And it's all good running. I mean, it's half mile through, so that'll help. Got the head off. I think everybody's lined out on what vehicle everybody's supposed to drive. So we'll head over here and start in over here, I guess. you won't get too much glare here but on this combine it's got what they call active yield and I think I touched on this a little bit earlier but uh, I've got it turned on now and so you can see down here where it says it's collecting the sample and you probably can't see in the grain tank I turn around to show you but there's way pads in there and when you start down through the field once that grain gets on top of them way pads then it'll somehow it's all figured in and calibrated in there and it'll weigh a certain amount of grain and you'll see here if i was to leave the camera on oh uh, i mean the end of the field's up here not very far but before we get there it should take that sample and then it'll be done calibrating and so you can see up here how many accepted samples you've taken and all that stuff and i really don't know exactly how it works but uh, some guys say it's really really accurate other guys say well eh, you know it's got a lot to be desired so i really can't say either way because i i haven't run it enough but uh, we're going to try it here and, and see what happens so basically now you don't have to calibrate like you used to where you would dump it on a grain cart or take it to town and weigh it or whatever this thing here is just continually calibrating itself and the way it works is your grain tank has to be clear empty when you start. And then if you was to stop and back up or pick the header up or cross a waterway or something, then it's gonna shut itself off and it's gonna reject that calibration load. So you gotta have a good, consistent feed coming into it the whole time in order for it to accept it. And I'm curious, there's a spot here where the wheat drowned out. We'll see here if it accepts it or if that's going to be too little material going in. Nope, it took it. So right as we got to that spot, it was done. So calibration update. And like I say, that's about how much grain is in the tank when it done that. Done with the field we was on earlier and got moved back over to the field we was on yesterday we're gonna fill everything tonight and then quit and dump it in the bin in the morning so if this will focus or not but yields hanging right in there that's instant yield and instant moisture there's average yield and average moisture so doing pretty good now one of the main differences on a draper head like this versus an auger head. On an auger head, you tend to run your reel down and back because you're trying to kind of force feed all that stuff into the auger. And a draper, you're gonna run them a lot higher and out a little bit farther. All you're trying to do is just barely tip the top of that just enough so it'll go right back on the belt. That's all you're looking for. So it took me a while to get used to that when we went from an auger head to a draper, but uh, 
it, it works really well. So you're always going to be up and out versus down and back. It's surprising though, you see all these videos of guys that just got their reel just screaming, you know, speed wise, just turning like a bastard. They've got it buried clear down in the weeds or beans, or whatever, and they're throwing shit over and whatnot. All you need is just enough, it don't matter if it's beans or what, you're just tipping the top of that to get it headed towards the belt, and then she'll go right in. Cut until about oh, 7.30, 8 o'clock last night. Got everything full. And the bin's in good shape today. Everything was good and dry. So we went ahead and put all that in. And we're going to try to get the rest of her cut today. We're going to move down. Once we get all this done, we're going to move down the road here. Half, three quarters of a mile. And that's our own personal wheat down there. It's only 14 acres. And we only planted wheat because we're going to do a waterway project there. So it's hard to do that stuff in the spring and the fall when you're busy doing other stuff. So it's a lot easier just to plant wheat on it than you got time in the summer to do it. And uh, the wheat down there, we're actually gonna windrow that. We got a guy that is gonna bale that. It's not for us, he's a dairy farmer and he was needing a little bit of straw. Young guy kind of getting started out. So we're gonna let him bale the straw off of it. And I guess I never told you guys either, this wheat that we're cutting around here, this is soft red winter wheat. This would have been planted, uh, you know, mid-October-ish roughly. And 
the elevators and stuff around here, we don't get into all that protein and all that stuff like they talk about out west. I mean, you just take it to the elevator and dump it just like you do beans or corn. They're not running a bunch of tests on it. They might test for vomitoxin or, or something weird like that, but you know, we're not shooting for these big protein levels and all that stuff like you hear the guys out west talking about. Got the neighbor all done and got moved down here to our own personal wheat. I forgot to show you guys when I raised the chopper up to windrow this, which all it is is a toggle switch. So if I don't forget, I'll go back when we're done and I'll show you when I lower it. But all I'm doing is I take a toggle switch, flip it, and that raises my chopper up on the back of this combine. So I'm not chopping and spreading a straw like we was. I'll show you what we're doing. Now we're putting it in what they call a windrow. See how it's all piled up right there? And we got a guy that's gonna come in and bale this. He's a dairy farmer needing some straw. So, look, you can see in my mirror there, there's no dust, you know, coming all out the back, you know, in a great big wide pattern. Now it's all laying her right down in one, and then that way all they gotta do is just come in with the baler and they just pick her right up. And if you notice, I'm cutting a heck of a lot lower now. I'm cutting damn near clear down on the ground. Basically taking just about the whole plant for the most part. You can see it better on this side. And the only reason being is now, if you cut it high, then you don't get near as much straw, and then you got to come in and mow it all the way down to the ground. So it's easier to just do it all with the combine and call it good. So, yeah, they're going to bale the straw off of this. Well, we got her all done down there. I'm going to show you guys the chopper deal on the combine that I forgot to show you. So yeah, your chopper here, you know, that spreads all your residue and everything, fans it all out. It's up in the up position now. So see right now, with them windrows I dropped down there, all your trash just comes out right here and just falls on the ground. It's not going through the chopper. And here's the way you change that. Just hold that double switch down. It just slides back and forth, and you want a wind row, hit the button, raise her up. If you don't, hit the button and let her down, and that's it. Well, with all that being said, that's a wrap on the 2021 wheat harvest. So, I uh, try to get all this stuff drug home. It's 4th of July weekend, so everybody's got a few plans here and there, so we're just going to leave stuff set. It's a little too wet to plant beans. I mean, the ground, it ain't muddy, but you, know, you want to make sure you get the slot closed when you drop them beans in this time of year. And actually, I talked to a neighbor earlier, he's planting, and he said about every three rounds, he's having to get off and dig mud out from the gauge wheels, and we ain't gonna do that. So we thought uh, we'll probably hit the ground running Monday morning. Today's Saturday, so Monday, I think by then, we'll be good enough to plant and uh, get all the beans slapped in, and that'll be a wrap on the double crop beans then. So I think we'll cut her off here, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I think the next time you see me, I'll probably be planting some double crop beans. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.